It's 1986, the peak of the Cold War. In total, the USA and Soviet Union possess over 63,000 nuclear weapons. Each one of these weapons is powerful enough to wipe out an entire city. Though both superpowers keep thousands of missiles ready to launch, only top leadership can authorize an attack. If the Soviets struck first, only the US president could order a counter-strike after consulting military advisors. This system ensured nuclear weapons remained a last resort, requiring approval from the most powerful leader. However, this approach had one critical flaw. The USA might respond too late if caught off guard. Despite this weakness, an automatic nuclear launch system seemed unthinkable. But not to the Soviet Union. The Soviets wanted to make sure that even if their leadership was eliminated, they would still be able to counter-attack at a full scale, making sure that when the Soviet Union ended, the world would end with it. This is a story of the Dead Hand the most terrifying nuclear system ever built. The end of the Second World War marked the beginning of the Cold War. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated the devastating new power of America. The Soviet Union, led by Joseph Stalin, recognized that nuclear weapons would determine the balance of global dominance. The communists created disorder in an attempt to gain control of the government. Once more, the world was reminded that basic in the idea of communism is the plan of world revolution. A desperate race began as the Soviets poured massive resources into developing their own atomic bomb. Four years later, on August 29, 1949, the Soviets successfully tested their first nuclear bomb, Joe one and with the most deadly of all weapons available to the Russians, no peoples in the world can feel secure against this aggression. From this point, tensions only continued to rise. Both the USA and Soviet Union started producing more and more nuclear missiles. The USA reached its peak in 1965, leaving the Soviets behind. But they kept pushing, and in 1978, they finally had more bombs than the US. But this wasn't enough for them. Soviet fears intensified when America developed incredibly accurate submarine launch missiles in the 1980s. Previously, most nuclear attacks would come from long-range bombers or land-based missiles both detectable by radar, giving the target roughly 30 minutes warning. Aerial submarine missiles were too inaccurate to destroy military targets, so they were only meant for hitting cities. But these new submarine weapons changed everything. They were accurate enough to destroy Soviet missile silos and command centers, yet virtually undetectable until impact. For the first time, America could potentially wipe out Soviet leadership and nuclear forces before they could retaliate. The 30-minute warning that had kept the nuclear balance stable was gone. This possibility pushed the Soviets toward an unthinkable solution. Designing a system that would automatically strike back. And this is when the Dead Hand was created. Development officially began in 1974 under the codename Perimeter. The project took over a decade to complete, with the first fully operational version deployed in 1985, just as the tensions with the United States reached new heights. The system was considered so sensitive that only a handful of officials knew of its existence. Deep Underground sits a specially modified missile designed to carry not nuclear bombs, but commands. This rocket carries a unique warhead 
that broadcasts launch orders to every Soviet missile silo across the country. The missile waits in an underground bunker hidden from the world above. And if the enemy attacks, it may decide the fate of the world. But what triggers this missile remains largely speculation. Intelligence suggests that the system may monitor military radio frequencies, tracking the sudden silence that would follow a nuclear strike. It might measure radiation levels that would spike after detonations, and detect the seismic shocks of multiple warheads hitting Soviet soil. Some even believe it can sense if anyone remains alive in command bunkers. The theory goes that when all these signals align, when the data confirms the worst has happened, the system makes its final calculation. However, there is strong evidence that even after all the signs are present, a human still has to confirm and authorize the final use. During an informal interview, one of the developers behind Dead Hand reveal the steps the system takes to decide on a nuclear strike. First, confirm a nuclear weapon had actually struck Soviet soil using seismic, radiation and air pressure sensors. Second, check if communication links to Soviet military headquarters still functioned. Third, wait anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour for any sign that leadership remained alive and in control. Fourth, if headquarters were silent, assume the worst had happened. At that moment, Perimeter would bypass the entire chain of command and transfer launch authority to whoever was left with the access to the system deep inside underground bunker. Even if the leaders were gone, no matter who was in that bunker, whether an experienced general or a novice sergeant, they would have the ability to decide if the world should end together with Russia. From the time of its development in 1985, the Dead Hand system still functions. Even though at the peak of Cold War there were more than five times as many nukes as there are currently, the threat of nuclear war is still very real. Systems like Dead Hand, though terrifying, serve as an another layer of nuclear deterrence, making sure that no one attacks as it would be equivalent to a death sentence. <laughs>